A homey matey, oh. and I reckon the chat and YouTube, the seas are looking crisply. They're looking crisp, man. Let me look. Of Thieves 2024 preview event, where we're going to give you your first look at some of the exciting features coming to Sea of Thieves this year. Wait a second. This guy is the voice of Sea of Thieves, right? The guy who does all these videos, and we just saw him? That's we're cool. We're going to give you your first look at some of the exciting features. Oh this year we are going to share information around what's coming in seasons 12 and 13 as well as even further into the future with a sneak peek behind the curtain that's crazy seeing him I don't, i've never seen him so mm. grog shut your mouth right now with a sneak peek behind the curtain on season 14 Yo, so and get ready for adventure Ho? as we reveal some of the incredible bounty of features headed to Sea of Thieves in 2024. Damn, bro, you got a voice on you, brother. The kind of main aims for season 12 are about mixing up the meta and how players enjoy all of the different aspects of Sea of Thieves. So as part of season 12, we're going to be adding two new weapons and three new tools for players to use. An area we haven't really delved into since launch is adding new weapons to the game. New weapons that give you new tactical choices and strategies out there on your adventures. So in season 12, we're going to be adding the double barrel pistol and throwing knives. The double barrel flintlock is a new type of pistol weapon where you can fire two shots individually before you need to reload, or you can charge them together and release them at once for a more powerful shot. We wanted to kind of create this new weapon archetype that's a bit shorter range, but a faster fire rate, but perhaps not as powerful or damaging as, as the flintlock pistol. But then it has those kind of blunderbuss-like qualities as well, where you can do the charge shot to release two pellets at the same time. Accompanying that double barrel flintlock with another weapon like the cutlass, for example, for a finishing blow can lead to a fast time to kill for a player to be able to quickly take down a target. Did you see that? Two, two, two of those shots and one swing. Interesting. Season 12 also brings in the throwing knives as a weapon. Now these can be used as a melee item. They have a light and a heavy melee action, but they can also be thrown and used at range as well. Yo, a different sword, basically? You can use it to kind of like stab players with like a- Can you block? Attack, but that doesn't do much damage, or you can charge it to like pull it into this kind of more dangerous stabbing motion. And uh, that will slow the player's movement down and give this like really high damage attack for if you like sneak up behind players. And then finally, it has the ability to kind of flip the knife over, catch it, and then throw it at distance against players, which, again, kind of feels like a trick shot. And they well, how many do you get? When you throw a throwing knife, and if you miss, you can actually go in the world, and it'll stick into any of the geometry, and you can just pull it out, and then it'll replenish your ammo. So I think, personally, for me, ammo. this is really good, because sometimes I miss, as I'm sure some of us do. Uh, so you can then just go ahead and pick it up again. So you get these wonderful moments where a pirate might throw a knife at you, but then you can retrieve that knife and throw it back to them. So it'll really mix up the kind of combat scenarios you can expect out in the world and when boarding other ships. There are three new tools in season 12, the wind caller, the scatter shot, and the bone caller. With the scatter, scatter shot, the way shot. that it's different to a standard cannonball is to be shorter range. Of four cannonballs, but they're much smaller. They have a much shorter fall off range so, and a really widespread, allowing you to hit a target with multiple projectiles at the same time. And it does really Yo. small amounts of damage to the ship, just like a level one size hole. So like really quick for players to repair, but it can kind of overwhelm a crew quite quickly. Basically, if you get up close with the scatter shot and you can get a few onto your enemy they're gonna have a lot of holes and they're gonna have a pretty bad time what it will do is really eat up an opponent's resources they'd need to use more wood to repair the many holes that the scatter shot puts into them oh. so the bone caller is an awesome new throwable that players can wield and they can throw that on the floor and when it smashes or don't say oh no spawn around the player in allegiance to them and they'll actually fight beside the player against the enemy players and the enemy no players. no, no. You might not be going straight for just a normal cannonball or a, or a chain shot you might in fact go straight for the bone caller so you can have some skellies that are on your side on that ship 
sort of messing things up for that crew. What? Fire to fight fire. So if somebody shoots a bone caller across the sea at your ship and they spawn in, if you have your own bone caller, you could throw that down on the deck and have your own skellies go and fight those uh, to take them out for you so that you don't have to. I'm what the f***ing like Rohe? To be able to spawn literally anything that is Listen, I, I don't believe for a second you're a solo player. I don't trust you. Is a massive uh, positive so i'm kind of looking forward to that and i'm sure that other players will find ways to make use of it as well the wind caller is a new horn-shaped shell that players can blow into to summon the power of the winds so imagine the scenario that you're heading fully into the wind and you're either chasing someone or you're trying to get away from someone now you can use this tool to blow wind into your sails and go even beyond full billow in speed looks like it's only it looks like it's only hitting that center one though so it's individual based right you wouldn't just be able to shoot it through this sail's not caught this sail's not caught this sail is this middle one right tool to blow wind into your sails and go even beyond full billow in speed players so it's going to be use it hmm. to kind of knock players back off their ship or on land so they can kind of target a player blow into the wind collar and it will throw them back into the oh air. You can use no it as a means of propulsion for yourself in the water but also for uh rowing boats so you can either use it while you're in the water swimming and you'll blast along like a really fast water boatman or you can stand on a rowing boat and blast it out of the back like uh, a speedboat, basically. You can put out fires and you can do it quickly. So you can just essentially walk around your entire ship is caught on fire and just put out all the fires as you walk around. And they can even use it to like stop their fall damage. Like say you're falling a great distance. Shut the f up, yo! Greatest item in the game it's like a, a finite charge for how long the wind caller can last for so you have to use it wisely wait what did he say at the end there as well there is like a, a finite charge for how long the wind caller can last for so you have to use it wisely well does that charge replenish so season 12 also introduces zip lines on what? Of the islands around Sea of Thieves. So you may have seen these as they debuted in the Monkey Island Tall Tales. And they're a really fun and exhilarating way to traverse. So it's really cool to be able to bring those to the wider Sea of Thieves world. So we've been looking across all the islands of the Sea of Thieves and looking at the most ideal places to kind of mix up the traversal opportunities uh, within all of the islands to add these zip lines across them. So we've added zip lines to like the outpost to get down to your ship quickly. We've added a Yo, season 12 is about to be to wild, then, dude. Positions to kind of escape the skeletons or get close to them when they first spawn, or just general kind of zip lines across the islands for like fast traversal and moving chests around the islands quickly. For example, on Ancient Spy Outpost, now you've got to clunk down some cliffs in order to get to your ship. Now you'll be able to just go and get on the zip line and go flying all the oh, way down to the jetty next to your ship. That's sick! So alongside adding completely <coughs> brand new tools to the Sea of Thieves sandbox, there's also the opportunity for us to go back and add completely brand new functionality to our existing tools. So another cool new feature that we're adding for Season 12 is the ability to balance on harpoon lines. So you can shoot that harpoon line at another ship or another island and then jump onto it and then like balance across the what in which you fire the harpoon it'll either be like too steep to climb up it but if you're on the other end you can actually jump on the harpoon line and like slide down it really quickly back to your ship we're really confident this will lead to some really inventive player boarding tactics out there in the sandbox as well as giving you new ways to traverse the islands with all this that we're adding in Season 12, it gives players more opportunities to create those stories as we're really enriching the sandbox of every session. So we're always really excited to add new tools and mechanics to Sea of Thieves, but we're always mindful that we want to make sure that the game's health is in a really good position as well, that the integrity of Sea of Thieves is there for our players. And since we're adding new weapons into Sea of Thieves, we're very mindful that we want to ensure that the hit registration in our game is as rock solid as it can be. And this is a, an ongoing thing for us as a development team. We're constantly putting time and effort into this area to try and make it as robust as possible. In the past, we've borrowed time from feature teams to address issues in the core experience. But it's oh, always taken a backseat to the features that those teams are working on. In 2024, this is changing. Dude, that's We're a crazy looking We're a dedicated tech. team to focus cool. on...
the game, bringing fixes and improvements to the things that matter most to our players as soon as they're ready as part of our regular monthly updates. This is going to be a key focus for the team this year. We want your Sea of Thieves experience to be the best that it can be. Adding new loadout choices as part of upcoming seasons shows our commitment to making encounters between players a more dynamic and fun experience. But crucially, this all has to operate on a stable combat system. We know that there's still plenty of work to do here, but this remains a top priority for our team. March's update delivered Easy Anti-Cheat, an industry-leading anti-cheat solution designed by Epic. This solution evolves over time, keeping up with cheat developers, blocking them at every turn. This is really, though, just the first step at improving the player experience here in Sea of Thieves. We want to focus yeah, this cheaters, on man. making Sea Little of Thieves play small wiener bitches. Than ever whether that be improving the performance of the game across the variety of hardware it runs on, ensuring that it's a safe place to play with a focus on cheating, but also ensuring that our hit registration is as reliable as possible in all of your adventures out there in the sandbox. So Wait, Captain Flame Heart what season are we on right now? How long do we got to wait for this? Being a We're on 11? Six weeks or so? Okay. ...character of Sea of Thieves for many yep. years, appearing in our novels and appearing in our many tall tales and expanded fiction. With season 13, this brings the return of Captain Flameheart to the Sea of Thieves. As Flameheart has been resurrected, so has his burning blade ship, and it's back in more monstrous and terrifying form. Yeah, that looks cool. Before. So we've That's super cool. It for season 13, and it looks incredible. It almost looks like an, a living entity itself. So traditionally, world events have been at set locations throughout the world. The mm -hmm. burning blade is a little different. The burning blade is a ship, and therefore moves it around the world. But <gasps> the twist is, Roaming when event. you've defeated the ship, you have the option to board it and pledge yourself and your crew to Flameheart, enter into his service, and become the crew of the Burning Blade. That's crazy. Essentially becoming a player-created world event yourselves. So obviously we have to go in big with this one. At a base, it is larger and more formidable than any ship we've seen on the waves. This ship has 10 cannons. It has a statue room dedicated to Flameheart at the back. It has a balcony where Flameheart likes to take in the view every morning with his coffee. And most importantly, it's got a massive flamethrower at the front. Players will be able to pull a lever on their ship and fire two massive balls of fire out the front of their ship, which is really interesting because we've never actually had an offensive weapon that's frontal facing before. So I think this is going to create some really interesting dynamic naval combat situations. So once you take over the Burning Blade, you are on this really powerful warship and you have a skeleton crew helping you as well. So even smaller crews have every chance of crewing the Burning Blade because the skeletons will come to your aid. So you could have skeletons repairing while you're on the cannons firing at enemies which is excellent. But it's not just about sailing around the world, which of course you can do. It's about completing orders in service of oh, Captain bro. Flameheart. So Pace is gonna want that ship at all times. Numerous skeleton camps. You'll notice the Reapers have been conducting excavations on the surface and they've been dragging up all sorts of ancient artifacts and ancient secrets. Yeah, the thing about this is it's gonna be tough to balance this. It's already gonna be tough to balance the weapons you've added two weapons a giant ship that people could take over very very game-changing utility items like the wind thing and the skeletons and we even saw like a weird grappling hook that which we haven't seen yet am i tripping on that just walking across the there's a lot of shit added that is probably not going to be balanced until they really see how the player base uses it you know what i'm saying from below the surface. Underground, there's basically a chamber with a prism that the players can control. I'm all about it though. Constellations on the ceiling in order to help the ritual come to completion and get that knowledge of the ancients. Each of these temples contains the secrets of the ancients, secrets that Flameheart wants above anything else. And as part of taking control of the ship, you'll be able to sail around the world, visit these ancient temples deep below these skeleton camps engaging new puzzle game players. yo yo what what happened to this dev team 
They are, this is crazy additions. Crazy shit. They're even making the ship not just something to be sought after for PvP purposes, but for PvE purposes. That is crazy. But treasures, but what you're really after is the Orb of Secrets. A new treasure artifact. That's for season 13, not 12. Yeah, well, that's fine. Collecting these secrets will add tribute to the Burning Blade ship. And the more tribute that you collect, the more value will be aboard the Burning Blade. But you will lose the Burning Blade if it sinks or when you choose to go and cash that tribute into Flameheart. Oh. So it's really up to you how long you think you can hold on to it with that risk reward wow. because everybody in the world is going to be coming for you. They're going to know you're in there and know you've got high value. So no it really becomes way. this dynamic player created world Dude, event. This with ship is nuts. In the what an idea so that is. You can visit these skeleton camps while in control of the burning blade it's not only tightly wedded to that new gameplay players can also visit them anytime in their adventures so should players visit these skeleton camps when they're not the crew of the burning blade the skeletons won't be too happy that you found a way inside these camps and you'll be engaging oh, in a combat but if you bring the burning blade you're seasons. chilling What's really exciting about season 13 is the interplay of the features and the way that they'll bring players together and combine to create new stories. And I just want to see 10 cannons start. To <laughs> everyone else who wants to take it down and steal that value. Everything in season 13 will bring. Imagine a broadside in that thing with skeletons helping you, bros. So towards the end of the year, we have. Oh, five on each side. 13, and while it's very early for us to talk about, we wanted to share some of their thinking here because oh, still being Sam. it is totally aligned with this vision for what 2024 can be. This laser focus on the sandbox and mechanics that add to the variety of stories you can encounter in Sea of Thieves. Internally, we're referring to season 14 as Pirates of Mischief. Sea of Thieves has always had this playful, mischievous, and funny sense of humor. And with season 14, we're expanding on that. The two main areas that we're exploring are new ways to stealth and new ways to cause mischief in the world. So I think a real aspect of the Sea of Thieves experience that we haven't dived too deep into previously is the idea of being a stealthy pirate. So when you think about stealth in Sea of Thieves and enhancing that, imagine being able to crouch and move around the world silently, or the ability to hang off the side of an enemy ship. When we were having these initial conversations about season 14, the first thing I thought of was the cardboard boxes in Metal Gear Solid. Could we allow players to climb into chests, and if they choose, they can actually scuttle around with their little legs out the bottom? And also, if they choose to, you know, keep the ruse up, could other players come along and pick them up like a normal loot chest or treasure chest or whatever and take it onto their ship? So another cool thing that we've been working on is, is the blow dart, which is another new weapon that players can wield from the armory and use that to kind of sneak aboard enemy ships and fire kind of these custom darts into players that will do different effects. So imagine a blow dart that tracks whatever it sticks to, whether that's a ship, a chest, an item, a player. Ones that could potentially like lure skeletons to like a specific position so you can throw a firebomb in there or, you know, explode a gunpowder keg or darts that can trigger specific sound effects, which is quite evil and cunning where you could board an enemy ship and shoot the capstone and it sounds like it's dropping or shoot the ladders and it sounds like someone's climbing up them. And then thinking about some of the ways that we want to add more mischief to the world, one of these is the idea of traps. So much like the kind of blunder bombs or fire bombs, we've been thinking about them being this kind of throwable trap that players can kind of throw into the world. Think of it like a, like a spring trap that players can place on the islands to trap skeletons on a bounty or on a fort or they could place it at the top of their ladders to prevent players from boarding their ships and get caught in this trap. Along yeah, with that also, one. I don't really know about that one. one. New tool, and it's the grapple gun, which is a dual purpose uh, rifle. So it allows you to tra traverse the environment much quicker because you're able to grapple yourself. Tell me it shoots. Tell example. me it shoots. But you can also harpoon items and other players in. So some of the new cool uses we've seen from the grapple gun in our early play tests are you know, players firing themselves out of the cannon towards another ship to try and board them and perhaps overcooking it and then using the grapple gun to fire it out. Okay, that's too easy. Themselves down onto it or oh, no, 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 that's too easy. Like an oncoming ship and then using the grapple gun to kind of 
grapple up and onto their ship. So oh no, that's true. Oh yeah. no. To make sure that uh, the grapple gun is balanced, it does have ammunition. You'll have arrowheads and these essentially break off when you successfully okay. use the grapple gun. Okay. Meaning you can't continuously keep grappling. There is a you skill to, to use in the gun. You have to find it somewhere. And accurately and efficiently. So when we think about 2024, we really think about getting to the very heart oh, of what man. makes Sea of Thieves great. That is your stories powered by that design philosophy of tools, not rules. Being a sneaky Season player, 12, that'll help a lot. 13 and 14 are fully exploring that, giving you new options, new tools. That's crazy. New possibilities that make this game unique and special. I think when you look at the year ahead for Sea of Thieves, our plans for Season 12, Season 13, and Season 14, it's kind of making this shift away from these big kind of systemic changes to Sea of Thieves and returning back to the core of what makes Sea of Thieves so special. That ship shit Thieves. is crazy. Look how big it looks next to the galleon, bro. Look how fucking big that looks next to the galleon. Obviously, it's like a weird camera angle, but fucking hell. It makes the galleon. Oh, that's a brig. Ha, I don't Thieves want to talk about so it. Special. The heart of sea of Thieves. Still, though, it's giant looking. There's new tools to create new stories out there in the world. We're ultimately shaking up the meta, giving players new tools to learn and master. And I can't wait to see what comes. That's going to be the craziest thing. On. I know there's a lot of crazy shit, back up again. While but new weapons is nuts. Today is still work in progress and possibly subject to change in some ways. We will be giving more insights onto how these things are developing as we come closer to launch for each of them. With the richness of all these new seasons and of course PlayStation Pirates joining us as well, it is such an exciting year for Sea of Thieves in 2024. It is. It is actually. Interesting stuff. Thank you for what a wild set of changes. Oh shit. <laughs> they got owls coming too. Ah, that's cool. Those are crazy changes that they planned this year. Very interesting.